So it's uh, it's really kind of exciting to um, be here today and, and and sort of see what's what's happened with fire. Um, I'm not sure how many of you know, but six years ago, I, I sort of wrote a very infamous sort of blog post. I called it the, the rise and fall of HL7, um, where I basically predicted that you know HL7 would would become much less prevalent and that APIs would would be the the future of integration in healthcare. Um, it's uh, kind of humbling, you know, when we look at ideas, you know, often kind of get much larger than ourselves as individuals or as companies and, um, or, you know, entire industries and so on. And I, it's, it's kind of interesting that FIRE has reached that point where I feel it's, it's bigger than any single one of us. It's bigger than any single company. It's bigger than any of the big EMR vendors. And, and I think it's actually something that's, that's going to stick. Um, and the reason I think it's going to stick is, is that it's, it has economic value, like it, it actually helps people make money, do better business, um, which is remarkable. I, I think this is sort of a, a smash hit that, that HL7 has got, um, you know, and I think the last smash hit was, was HL7 2.x, whereas I, I think FIRE is, is the new, new thing going forward. And I, I can sort of see this just growing. Um, so it's pretty exciting to kind of, you know, you know, I, I really didn't think six years ago that this would happen um, and to this extent and so on. But it's it's sort of really quite a sea change in the industry that we're sort of seeing. So, um, you know, just here to kind of talk a bit about a, a project we, we dealt with with, with FIRE with a, a client. Um, I'll, I'll start off with just giving a little bit of an introduction to Interface for who we are, um, our history. Um, and then I'll be handing over to my, my colleague, Pierce, who will be talking about the actual project we, we did with one of our customers, Kanos, um, which uses the Firebase platform that, that Pavel from Health Samurai is, is behind. So we've been, I've been in the integration industry far too long. I, 20 years ago is when I started out in this, this whole industry and you know, started off with a, a product called Chameleon, which was an HL7 toolkit. Um, moved on to Iguana. Um, and today, you know, we're one of the top class-ranked interface engines in, in, in you know, globally. Uh, we, we get 94.6%, you know, which puts us in the top three of, of class-ranked interface engines. So, you know, I've been doing integration way too long. <laughs> um, but it's, it's really interesting just to sort of, you know, see some real change happening in this industry. I mean, integration is always about sort of handling data in, translated data out and and you know fire is definitely raising the bar in terms of interoperability what's possible but yeah, there always is that sort of that challenge of the fact that you know it, it's you know I, I come from Toronto and and uh, we have these hundred year old houses in Toronto and every time you, you do a kitchen you always sort of end up with sort of needing to put some kind of like bit of shim in between you know the main the rest of your house to sort of make it fit I always sort of joke that, you know, contractors in Toronto are good at putting toothpicks into the, <laughs> to sort of get all, all the old sort of things to fit. And, and healthcare is like that. I mean, the reality is that, you know, today we're sort of seeing some of the, the, the bright new applications that are coming through, but there's an awful lot of legacy in healthcare and it, it's always going to be that way. Like, I mean, when we look at the healthcare industry, um, you know, we're not dealing with millions of installations. A successful HIT application is going to install in hundreds, maybe thousands of, of facilities, if you're lucky. Um, and so it's, there's always a lot more customization. You're always sort of dealing with how to customize workflow to, to particular need and, and so on. So, that, you know, there's always going to be that um, problem of how do you fit with, with legacy, legacy information. So, you know, if we look, you know, we, we, we sit... Um, I said, like integration is usually not algorithmically complicated. It's always just little things. You know, some system that might represent a phone number as primary and secondary phone, whereas another, um, you know, system would sort of represent mobile work, um, home phones, etc. And they're, they're both perfectly valid ways of, of representing information. Um, and nobody is really going to re-architect their application just to fit a standard. Honestly, I um, mean, it, it's you know, there's always going to be different choices. You know, society changes. You know, things rise and, and fall, um, and so applications, you know, tend to kind of change and, and meet the sort of styles and, and fashion of the time. You know, that, that, that they're written in. So, you know, kind of, what do we do? We we we're a vendor of an integration engine called Iguana, 
Um, Iguanas a little bit different from most of the traditional sort of approaches that are taken with, with innovation engines in the sense that we really put a lot of focus around um, providing a specialized coding environment, which we've patented called the, the translator. And how it works is we have sample data. Um, it all works as sample data. Um, and then every time you change the sample data, it runs the, the translation from start to finish. Um, every time you change a line of code in the translation, it, it changes it all. Um, and because we were, were sort of optimized for integration work rather than trying to be sort of a general purpose sort of tool, you know, for doing all sorts of development, um, it means we're able to kind of come up with some fairly unique ways in, in which the environment works that, that provides some fairly unique value in the industry. So one of the things that sort of, you know, if you've ever kind of tried our product um, and sort of typed a few lines of code and you sort of see these funny little rectangular boxes which sort of appear beside the code, um, which we call annotation windows. And what the annotation window is doing is it's sort of giving you real-time feedback line by line um, as you, you're sort of transforming data in, in your code um, that sort of show you know, how, how the, the data has been transformed in, in the translation. Um, and combine that with um, the way that we do auto-completion in, inside the environment um, is what really gives the whole uh, productivity advantage that we have over all the other platforms, which is why we, we have a high class ranking. Um, you can sort of see here, we're sort of showing an example of, of dealing with a V2 HL7 message. And notice the, 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 the distinguishing characteristic of the way that we do this is that we combine not just the grammar information that you get in a traditional environment like a Visual Studio or Eclipse and so on, but you're actually getting the data as well combined with the grammar information. And that, that's really the massive distinguishing characteristic that we have with our platform. Um, and it makes an awful lot of sense when you think about, you know, with healthcare standards, they're often, healthcare standards are, are, are big, they're broad, they're designed for sort of like, you know, generic use cases. And one of the challenges when you're sort of looking at, at integrating with the Pacific system is just trying to figure out what fields, what, what part of the standard did the vendor actually implement with. And the same as sort of you know, whether you're looking at a fire resource or if you're looking at um, version 2 H or 7 or X12 or a proprietary API. Um, it's always just has a lot of value just to be able to ha kind of have at your fingertips to be able to look at, at what data um, you know, is actually available. And it, it just means you don't have to spend all the time looking at specifications. You can kind of just get on and actually see how a system is really implemented, um, which is important because it, it's, you get so much variance in this industry because you know, when you, you integrate with a, a particular vendor system at a particular site, it's often, you know, an older version. Like healthcare is notorious for sort of being very slow to upgrade because of the whole disruption that occurs when you upgrade a, an EMR system and so on. So, um, you know, that's sort of where we, we, we fit. Anyway, um, don't really want to sort of just give a pitch for our product and so on. We actually have some, some technical content we'd like to share uh, that I think would be of interest to, to people. Um, we, we recently sort of just did a project with, with Kanos, which is one of our partners. and. Um, with their Evolve platform, which is based on, on the Firebase um, platform from Health Samurai. Um, and I think, you know, my colleague P.S. Will, will have a, a chance to sort of go into depth about it. But what was just fascinating for me was the fact that Fire really sort of showed its, its advantage in terms of saving us a heck of a lot of time um, without having to actually sort of read specs of Firebase or or engage, you know, with Health Samurai. You know, we were able to connect up our, our product using a Fire adapter, and we just plugged it straight in without having to kind of even look at the documentation for Firebase. And that, for me, is a game changer. That, that to me, sort of says that Fire really has economic value as a standard because it's actually allowing us to do things that we could never have done with previous health standards and, and so on. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll be handing over to Piers to also sort of talk about some of the interesting sort of technical uh, aspects we, we found with this project that I, I think we'd like to kind of share with, with the wider community. Uh, hey everyone, so my name is Piers Arkenrader. Uh, I'm an integration consultant with Interfaceware and I was the technical lead uh, for this project with Kanos. And basically what I want to discuss are some of the, the problems that we encountered when we were building out these interfaces for the Evolve platform. Uh, and how Fire helped us to solve those problems. 
So the first major issue that we had is we needed to figure out a way of getting bulk data from a hospital's EMR into the Evolve platform. Because the Evolve platform actually works sort of on top of a hospital's existing EMR. So we needed, we needed a way of getting this bulk data, uh, usually in, the, in CSV format, um, into, into uh, Iguana and then into, into Evolve. And the reason why that was sort of an issue for us is because a lot of these EMRs were giving us these bulk dumps of say 200 to 300 CSVs, each of these different cross-referenced IDs and whatnot. Uh, so we had to figure out a way of efficiently building out all the different fire resources that were associated with that data and then utilizing them. Um, so the next one is obviously transferring that bulk data. So now that we've got all the data inside Evolve, how do we move it around quickly and efficiently? Uh, third problem we had is that we had to utilize RESTful web services. Um, that was how uh, Firebase interacted with the Evolve platform, and that's how the Evolve platform interacted with some of its uh, sort of tertiary partners. So the whole system needed to utilize web services. And lastly, obviously, it needs to, needs to perform well. No one wants to use a product that is slow or clunky or takes a long time for uh, providers to bring up their data. So it had to perform as efficiently as possible. Now, obviously, Iguana was an awesome tool for us to, uh, to fix these problems using Fire. So what we were able to do is we were able to build out um, a system where we could um, basically bulk merge these CSV files that I was talking about uh, with our, uh, our SQLite database and into, into Firebase. And basically what that allowed us to do is once we had all that data in SQLite, we could query for all these different cross-referenced IDs and build out all of our Fire resources programmatically. And thanks to the Fire bundle technology, we could basically just do mass transactions of Fire resources into Firebase. Uh, which dramatically increased our, uh, our, our performance in terms of moving data into the back end and then also getting data uh, out of Firebase and back to the Evolve platform. Now, the other reason why uh, Iguana was so helpful with building out these interfaces is that we also needed to bring in data from multiple other uh, data sources. So we didn't just have CSV dumps, we also had HL7 version 2, uh, we had flat text files and maybe dictations from providers. Uh, we had maybe other fire resources from other systems, or we might have CCDA documents. And so we needed to have ways of parsing all these different data sets coming in and building out fire resources uh, in order to A, move them into Firebase and move them back to the Evolve platform. And the nice thing about the fire bundle resource is that it, uh, it allowed us to have sort of a multifunctionality in terms of how we moved the data because we could not only just create these bulk transactions of resources, but then we could also start doing queries to Firebase and create bundles based on um, you know, any parameter we wanted to. So we could create a bundle based on a certain patient and pull up all resources uh, based on that patient or say all conditions. And it basically gave us a lot of functionality in terms of how we wanted to move that data into the Evolve platform and uh, how Evolve wanted to uh, display that data. And lastly, um, you know, the, I think the major thing that Elliot touched upon is how Fire allowed us to collaborate much better. So the, there were a lot of different teams involved uh, within this project, and we were based all over the world. Uh, so I, I'm based in Toronto, Ontario. The Kanos implementation team is based in Northern Ireland. Their dev team is based in Poland. And uh, the guys from Health Samurai are based in California. So as I'm sure you guys can imagine, it was really hard to try and schedule meetings between the different teams because they're all in different time zones. But thanks to the FIRE standard, we all had a, a really good idea of what data formats we were working with. Um, and that made it much easier for us to build out our functions to send this data around uh, without needing to have a whole lot of communication. And lastly, what was the impact? Well, obviously we were uh, able to move large amounts of data um, into, uh, into Firebase and into Evolve we were able to map um, multiple different data, data sources into these fire resources and also map these resources back to, say, HL7 version 2 or things like that. Um, we were able to create and deliver these resources programmatically in such a way that uh, you know, the process was much more efficient. And thanks to the fire standard, um, we were able to finish this project 
much, uh, much faster than we anticipated to, and we were able to anticipate it under budget because we were ahead of schedule. And uh, so this, uh, the Evolve platform along with Iguana has already actually been rolled out in uh, two hospital centers here in the United States and four hospitals in the uh, NHS system in the UK. And we're planning on moving it out to, I believe, 400 hospitals in the NHS and uh, 1,300 hospitals in the US by the end of next year. So it's a pretty exciting project. Thanks very much.